In today's video, we're going to be pushing further towards 2000 D low, currently 41 away. We'll be playing a 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game on chess.com. And I'll be trying to talk you through my thought process while we play. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so we are against Rigzin Updala from Switzerland. Very unfortunate for the Swiss to be losing to England the other day, but you know, England are obviously gonna bring it home. And my opponent goes for the fantasy variation of the Cairo Khan. So the best line is to take. Uh, no, well, it's the most theoretical line to take and then take e5. And it's, it gets kind of crazy, like knight f3. I believe the line is bishop g4, bishop c4, knight d7. And there's a bunch of tactical complications. I have some videos on the channel, which we linked in a playlist below. I, well, I have a bunch in the car Khan, but it is a couple of specific ones that feature the fantasy variation. I personally like going for this E6 line because my argument is that if I don't take white, then white can't take back with the F pawn. And if white can't take back with the F pawn, then firstly, why is the pawn even on F3? Secondly, the queen can't get out. The knight can't go to its natural developing square. And the bishop has no real obvious like developing square to go to because obviously c4 and b5 are occupied by my pawns and if the bishop goes to d3 then the only way to actually activate it is to either take or push e5 which again just means the f3 pawn is doing absolutely nothing so that's the way that i like to play this um i believe a6 might actually be a move here um knight f6 i think is decent and then if my opponent goes e5 then i drop the knight back to d7 and the plan is to push c5 i, I only, honestly i actually need to book up on this a little bit better because i'm not 100 percent sure but at least if e5 and knight f to d7 happens i'm pretty like comfortable in the position because i know that c5 is the break then i can get the knight to c6 potentially get the queen to b6 I can even push a6 at some time in the future, because obviously once the c6 pawn moves, it no longer occupies the b5 square. And white could try some tricky maneuvers like knight b5 and into d6, because if the pawn goes to e5, are we supporting that? Very common idea. Bishop goes to e3. So white might be trying to go like queen d2 and a quick queenside castle, which wouldn't be the stupidest idea. Uh, h6 is definitely playable, just somewhat of a waiting move because it's not obvious what I do in this position. It's also more difficult to play c5 because the bishop helps cover that square. I'm tempted to go queen b6 to put pressure on b2 and also support a c5 push in the future. It might be difficult because of knight a4 with some kind of fork, so I've got to be careful. Although I suppose I could always give a check on a5 and force to move c3 so that the knight would be defended by the queen if it goes out to a4. Queen to a5 is also potentially decent because we pin the knight to the king and also just get the queen out. I'm not sure. And also I guess we're going to put pressure on a2 if white wants to go queenside. Queen a5 also threatens takes, 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 because we'll be pinning the knight to the king. So I'm kind of torn between queen b6 and queen a5. a6 would also be viable. a6 wouldn't be bad. I, mm, I feel like I should be moving the queen, though. Queen a5. I'm going to go queen a5. I've had some somewhat similar positions to this previously. Involving trying to undermine the e4 pawn in the caro when white doesn't take so it might have actually been in a fantasy variation And just pinning the knight to the king can be quite useful even if the queen goes to d2 which White may well do then moves like bishop to b4 are still probably quite annoying for white Because then we'll be threatening moves like take take and knight to e4 because obviously if knight takes, then we take the queen on d2. So if we can force a move like bishop d3, I mean, that's probably good. 
probably good for white, but like uh, the bishops on e3 and e3 look a little bit misplaced. Something tells me just a little bit off in that position. Okay, I might actually start by taking just, hmm, I guess I free up the d5 square, so if someone like takes, takes, bishop b4, and uh, I don't know, in the future white does something like e5, then I have the d5 square, which is pretty nice, because I'll be targeting e3 and the knight on c3. If I take, he could take with the knight. Bishop b5, he can take on f6 with check and go c3, so that's not really any good. I could go bishop b4 first, of course, but I'm just thinking about e5 immediately from white because I don't have the e4 square. So, okay, d e4 and f e4, bishop b4, I'm happy with. If d e4, knight e4, I'm a bit less happy about that. So, if bishop b4, e5, knight d7, I guess I can just work towards making c5 happen, and e5 will actually be quite weak anyway. And again, I probably assume white's going to have to play a move like f4 to support the e5 pawn, meaning that, again, the move f3 is kind of just a waste. I know it is controlling the e4 square, so it's somewhat useful, but if it's moving twice in like the first 10 moves, it's just a bit odd. Although I guess we're probably going to be doing that with our C-pawn, so very hypocritical. But let's go bishop b4. Maybe queen b6 previously was better, but I don't know, I wasn't thrilled. I wasn't thrilled with it. I mean, knight a4 wouldn't have really... I mean, if knight a4, queen b4, c3, that isn't even that good for us anyway. So, Also, if you haven't noticed, we've got a new mic setup going. It's actually the same mic, but... I've got like a muffler thing on it and this like massive arm that's just, well, it's just out of the screen, but like it holds it up here, which should make for better audio quality, I hope. So let me know what you guys reckon to that. So yeah, my opponent goes e5. I think that's the right time to be playing it. Let's go knight to d7. And now c5 is definitely on the cards. Also worth noting the move a3 doesn't actually do anything. He's not threatening to take the bishop because his rook will be hanging. So it's actually quite difficult for white to develop properly now. Because if he plays a move like knight e2, I literally <laughs> predicted that, defending the knight, then like, where's his bishop going? It's just completely stuck. c5 looks pretty tempting. If he takes, I might take on e5 to try and get into a square like c4. Which, I mean, this looks pretty promising. I feel like we should strike while the iron is hot. Of course, he doesn't have to take us. But if he doesn't, then we'll just build up with moves like knight c6, maybe b6 to play bishop to a6 to get on this diagonal, which his bishop is now not controlling because his knight is in the way. So I think white is actually quite cramped. I don't see a problem with c5. I don't... Like, white's bishop... I, I said it was a bit weird going to e3. And I wasn't sure exactly why, it just looked a little bit off. But I think the bishop probably belongs on a square like d2 to be breaking this pin, rather than the queen breaking the pin. But yeah, a3, it, it doesn't threaten anything, because he'll just be hanging a rook. So I think we can just go knight c6, and continue applying pressure. And we're also just, you know, continuing development. Taking on d4 seems premature. Because white can just play something like bishop d4, defend e5, defend the knight, and then he starts to break out of the position. So let's keep the tension in the center. I want him to take us so that we can take on e5. Of course, if he takes, we could take on c5 with the bishop or something. b4 wouldn't be a move because we can take. This pin still exists, so he can't take back. But <laughs> take, take. Bishop takes, something like queen takes. I guess e5 is weak and this diagonal is weak, but he could just play a move like f4. Whoa. g4. I'm going to assume he wants to go f4, f5. But I mean, one, this diagonal is... Uh, it's not that weak, actually. I guess the bishop can drop to f2 or the knight can come to g3. But that seems like a complete waste of a move. I don't really understand that. 
If we take on d4, bishop takes d4. Oh, also, real quick. He, since he's played g4, he can't really castle kingside. And the only way for him to actually make a takes b4 a viable move, because it currently isn't playable, is to move the rook. And if he moves the rook, he can't castle queenside. Playing g4 means he can't really castle kingside either. So I don't know how he's planning to get a safe king later in the game. Cd4 is definitely quite tempting. There is also an interesting idea of knight e5, d e5, and d4, forking the bishop and the knight. But that seems way too over the top. That seems really unnecessary. Don't see why we can't just take on d5 and then, you know, one of our pieces take on e5. This knight can't get in or anything because this still exists. So, yeah, we could continue with moves like b6, bishop a6, but... Yeah, I think we can probably just take on e5. I don't see the problem. f3 is under attack. We're threatening knight c4. That looks pretty crushing. I know his knight is a bit more stable now with the bishop defending it also, but this move is still not playable because the rook is still hanging. So I'm going to take on e5. And we're going to be up a clean pawn. And the move g4, all it's really done is weaken f3, which is obviously just to our benefit. So let's take take. And this knight is pretty devastating now. I was considering for white the move knight d4 so that the bishop covered the c4 square and the knight covered f3. Okay, queen f4 is definitely playable. Also, note it attacks the bishop because obviously queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes is playable. But I think we can just go knight to c4. We could take the knight first, but I don't see the point in rushing it. He's not forcing us to do anything. And he's also not threatening to infiltrate anywhere because we'll control all of these squares. The f pawn is, you know, very safe. We can castle whenever we want. So let's play knight c4. This knight is still pinned. This pawn is still pinned. And the knight cuts off the queen's connection to the bishop. If a move like b3 is played, trying to get the knight to move so that the queen does attack the bishop, then of course we can just take on c3 because he'll be removing a defender and just win a whole piece. Even if we weren't winning a piece, we can take on c3 with tempo and then get the knight out of there afterwards to a square like b6, even if he was actually trapping, um, not trapping the bishop, but meaning that we couldn't win a piece by playing a move like b3. So he finally moves the rook. Finally. I'm actually considering knight to a3. Knight a3 might just win on the spot. Because we're attacking the rook and we're attacking c2, which would come with check. So if something like knight a3, rook a1 to maintain the pin, then we can just go knight c2 and win the rook because it will come with check. Knight a3, if pawn a3, then bishop c3. We remove the defender of the knight. And after knight takes, queen takes, we're up a pawn. Probably, oh no, we're up two pawns because we're already up a pawn. Probably going to win one of these three pawns. Obviously his queen can't take because this pawn is gone. And his rook is just simply under attack. C2 is also under attack. So if knight a3, rook c1, defending c2 and getting out of the way, then I, sh I think we can just go knight back to c4 and just be up two pawns, maintain the pressure on the b-pawn. And then if rook goes back to b1, we can probably just take on b2. Because if rook b2, bishop c3, knight c3, queen c3, that'll be an easy fork. I don't think I'm missing anything. White doesn't really have many actual options because so many of his pieces are just not doing anything. This knight can't move. This knight is maintaining defense of the knight. The bishop can't do anything. The rook can't do anything. The queen is the only real active piece. So I'm just triple checking this is fine, but... I don't see a problem with this. Uh, this just looks like a, ma a massive issue for white. And of course, this does not work because knight c2 comes with an attack on the king and an attack on the rook. Well, and the knight would also be attacking the rook. So he decides to take, which might be the most pragmatic option. 
but I think it also gives us the simplest win. Because once we trade, also important is we have the same colored bishops, so there's no opposite colored bishop tricks. I think we can just take on c2. Ah, oh, my opponent resigns. So yeah, that makes life very, very easy. Another very nice Karo Khan game, and again, breaking apart the fantasy variation, which I used to play as the white pieces. And I'll, I'll talk you through some of the lines in the post-game analysis, so I'd encourage you to stick around for that. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel yet and you've enjoyed the game, then I'd encourage you to subscribe to get these videos recommended to you more often on your homepage. And I'd also encourage you to stick around for the analysis. I'm, I'm going to talk a bit of theory, so this should be helpful whether you play the fantasy from the white side or you face it from the black side. So let's get into it. All right, so game review gives 90.4% accuracy for myself and 79.8 for my opponent. And there was only one real mistake that I made by the looks of it. And um, I'm sure a few of you probably like noticed it when I played it. And it was one of the moves that I wasn't really certain of. Um, if you can guess what it is, then um, I mean, I can't actually, you know, tell whether you actually got it if you whack it in the comments, but we can have a level of trust. We can have a level of trust. So, okay, obviously we have the Caro. And White has so many choices. He can go knight c3, knight f3. There's even some mad opening with bishop c4, the hillbilly attack. It's completely ridiculous. And after d5, like, some people take take and go like bishop to b3, which just looks really stupid, but it's not actually that bad somehow. And some people just go bishop b3 straight away. I've, I've had this played against me before, like I'm not making this up. And as black, you can just take on e4, play moves like knight f3, e6. I think some people like to sacrifice uh, the pawn on f3 and do something like this. And obviously white gets a lot of development. He's going to castle kingside, try and eye up the f7 square, maybe go something like knight g5, knight e5. And it's kind of scary. But, I don't know, if you just do something like knight f6, castles, e6, I don't really see the problem. There's better ways to play the position, I'm sure. Bishop f5 is something the engine wants to do. I'm assuming it wants to drop the bishop to g6, except not in this position. Bishop f5 first, castle, oh, and then e6, and then knight f6. Because the reason I played knight f6 was to block the rook's connection to f7, but... Yeah, the bishop f5 works as well, and then it doesn't get locked in behind the e6 pawn, so it's a good one to know, because the hillbilly attack, it I mean, it actually gets used more than it should, <laughs> more than it should. But okay, d4, d5, again, white has a lot of options, knight c3, knight d2, e5, you can take, bishop d3 isn't that uncommon, those are the main lines, really. And my opponent chooses f3. Now... As I let the computer think for a second and gather its thoughts, it will tell me that d takes e4 is the best move. But the only way to actually play this position as black is with e5. White can't take this pawn because of queen to h4 check. And if g3, then queen to e4 forks the king and the rook. And if the white king moves, then, you know, I'm going to win the e4 pawn anyway. So material is equal and the king is just on d2, so obviously that's not good. So, yeah, the, the thing is, in these kinds of positions, it's very theoretical, like knight f3, bishop g4. I, is bishop g4 not the move? Okay, bishop e6? Okay, I've always thought bishop g4 is the move, so if I'm, like, behind on some new theory... Then I'd love to know. Also, e d4 is probably a good move. I don't think white's supposed to take this. Like, white just gets mad development, like bishop c4, castle, something like knight g5 or knight e5, f7's very weak. I hate playing this position with the, with the black pieces. Instead, what I would recommend, and what I've recommended several times in the past, is the move e6. And... I explained why I do this. The whole point is that if white takes, then 
probably take with the e-pawn to open this bishop up. And essentially, what we get is an exchange Karo Khan. So if I just take this back a second, it's like we've had an exchange Karo Khan and White has played f3, which is obviously a ridiculous move. Like if you saw someone play this, you know, you, you would think they were rated like 200 ELO because why would you ever do that? So that's the whole point of playing e6 because I'm saying you can't actually take me because if you take me, your opening makes zero sense. And actually a, a video, like a couple of videos ago, I had an opponent in the Karo Khan who played f4 and then after d5, obviously e5 is the idea so that the f pawn supports the e5 pawn, but he took, which meant that like the f pawn was just there for no reason. <laughs> And after a move like d4, there's a massive hole on the e4 square. Moves like bishop f5, knight f6 are going to be big problems for the white pieces. And that That's not exactly how that game went, to be fair, because he didn't play d4. He just decided not to push the d4 pawn so that he wouldn't weaken the e4 square, presumably. Didn't work that well. Um, but anyway, yeah, f3, e6, knight c3. Knight c3 is just an easy developing move, you know, put pressure on d5 as if it isn't defended incredibly well anyway, but also just supporting the e4 pawn. I went knight to f6. Apparently bishop b4 is a little bit better, which looks like a bit of a winner were French. Yeah, it's basically just a winner were French, except c6 and f3 are on the board for some reason. Um, yeah, bishop d2 just looks pretty solid to block that. Bishop f4. I don't know. I, I, I don't actually really know the theory, in all honesty. I just find it a very easy position to play. And I choose knight f6 because I'm trying to encourage white to push e5. And this is the best move. But after like knight f to d7, white has to play f4, apparently, to try and maintain his advantage. And it's essentially just a French defense, except white's played f3 for some reason. I've played c6 for some reason, and the white knight is a arguably misplaced on the c3 square. So it's like a French, except I think it's more in black's favour, which is why I offered my opponent this variation, and it's similar to what happened in the game anyway. He tries to delay this, move bishop to e3, again just developing, no real risk. And here I'm supposed to take on e4. And if knight e4, knight e4, f e4, I assume I give this check on h4 and win the e4, win the e4 pawn. King, wait, g3 is playable? No, it's not. Okay, the computer just had a bit of a fit there. So, yeah. Uh, bishop e3 is a fine move. I should be taking. Because, yeah, we just, um, we know what happens if knight takes. Knight takes, pawn takes, and queen h4. So if pawn takes then bishop b4, and then we are threatening the e-pawn, which is not how it worked out in the game, because I didn't want to give white the opportunity to take with the knight, but it didn't work because my queen was out on a5, so it didn't have access to the h4 square that it would have if the knights got exchanged on e4. Interesting subtlety, again, trying to expose the weakness of moving the f-pawn really early on, essentially. So queen a5 is the move I chose, which is apparently a mistake. Queen b6 was actually better, so against my better judgment. I mean, it's clearly a fine move. I'm supporting c5, attacking d4, attacking b2. I was like a little bit concerned about knight a4, just attacking my queen. Queen a5, c3 is, I assume, is what I assume would have been played, but then e4 just hangs. And knight c3 also hangs the pawn. So I don't know why I was worried about that. I have a tendency to do that, to be honest. Just worry unnecessarily about like the slightest side effect of a move. Queen a5 is potentially more like risk-free, but also doesn't give me quite as much. And here white should be playing e5 to take advantage of this. And after knight f to d7, I honestly just like this position for black. I don't know if I'm just weird for liking it but after something like f4 c5 maybe a6 followed by c5 just looks pretty good to me like i know the e5 pawn is supported well by the f pawn but white has moved this pawn twice so me moving my c pawn twice isn't that big of a deal 
and you know we just have a good amount of activity out on the queen side once the pieces start to get developed queen d2 is a miss though and bishop b4 is the move i initially wanted to take on e4 and my plan was after f e4 bishop b4 i'd be threatening knight e4 and the difference between playing bishop b4 straight away is that if e5 is played then i can just hop the knight into e4 or d5 because the f pawn isn't there to stop me and my d pawn isn't there to block me from going to d5 but my issue was if i take on e4 then knight takes e4 can be played offering a queen trade offering a knight trade so bishop b4 doesn't work because white just takes on f6 with check plays c3 and white is clearly better really good pawn structure my king is unsafe my bishop's terrible and you know moves like bishop e3 knight e2 very very natural so after queen d2 i instead chose bishop to b4 oh and of course um if queen d2 takes takes queen d2 and something like bishop d2 again i think white is just better because my bishop is bad this bishop isn't going anywhere useful it's probably playable but it's not really pushing for an advantage so it i mean if you wanted to draw it would be viable but i don't want to draw so bishop b4 my opponent goes e5 because of course i'm now threatening the e4 pawn i half expected to move bishop d3 just supporting the pawn apparently c5 is very strong if d c5 then just knight c6 i guess i threaten d4 c5 is still very weak anyway the pin still yeah makes a lot of sense if something like e5 then i guess just oh yeah no that's the point of knight c6 to control the e5 square i'm basically blind Okay, but e5, knight fd7, and now c5 is the obvious idea. My opponent goes knight g to e2, which, yeah, I don't know, wasn't really great. He probably should have gone f4, something like knight f3 to keep his bishop open, which would have meant that the knight coming to c4 wouldn't have been a problem, and it wouldn't have been as easy to undermine e5, because it's now defended incredibly well. I think black can still push for an advantage here, but it's, it's good for white. Knight fd7, though, you know, the e5 pawn is under attack. We're preparing c5, and knight g to e2 kind of doesn't cut it because it defends the knight, but it also blocks the bishop in. f4 needs to be played to defend e5, really. So c5 is the best move by far. I considered playing a6 first just to cut off the b5 square, but there's absolutely no need. We can just strike immediately with the move c5. And yeah, here my opponent chose a3, which literally does nothing because it's not threatening anything. So I was very happy to see this on the board. Instead, f4 was better, just trying to support the e5 pawn. Although something like knight to f6, knight c6, knight b6, trying to come into c4, all very good options for black. a3, this pin just exists, and it means it's kind of a waste of a move. So we go knight c6. CD4 was better, but okay, this is still pretty good. And then G4 was just like, bro, what are you doing? He he spent like 15 seconds on that move and just played G4, which did absolutely nothing and basically just loses him the game. I actually don't understand the thought process. So maybe he meant to play G3 to get the bishop out to G2. It still doesn't make really any sense to me though, but okay. Now, when your opponents play stupid moves, you have to take advantage of it. And he's just not addressing the problem, which is the center. He should be doing something like f4 or something like dc5. Rook d1 is apparently playable, renewing the threat on the bishop. Rook b1 with the same idea. But yeah, g4. Okay, then. So we just take on d4. Bishop d4 is another mistake. Knight d4 is better. Surprisingly. I think the idea is that after I take on e5, the bishop controls c4 and the knight controls f3. So when I take on e5, I don't have an immediate threat. The problem with the, with the way my opponent did it is that after bishop d4, knight, d, knight e5, bishop e5, knight e5, this knight hasn't moved. So the only real way that I thought 
to defend the position, and the computer agrees, is to go knight d4, which he should have done previously, is what the computer is arguing. Because now f3 is defended, and c4 is defended by the bishop. Of course I could just take on c3, and ruin his structure, and just have a very pleasant endgame up a pawn, and I mean f3 is horrible, c3 is horrible, c2 is terrible. It's, it's going to be rough for white, but I don't know, maybe this was his best idea. Queen f4 was played, which is, I mean, it's kind of clever, like, it targets a couple of my pieces. Bishop d6 is also good. Knight c4 is the second best move, but bishop d6 is better. I guess you just defend the knight, get the bishop out of the way. Maybe knight c4, like, if white plays a stupid move like bishop g2, oh, knight d3 just wins the queen. So, yeah, queenside castling also doesn't help, because knight d3 still comes with check. But the queen would have to move. Knight c4 all the same. Again, very, very easy position for black. I choose knight c4 though. I guess maybe it's a little bit of tunnel vision, but I'm just trying to go forward, which is still, you know, very reasonable. Rook b1. It is a, it is a fair move for black to be make. sorry, for white to be making in fairness. And the computer just wants to drop the bishop back. It even likes bishop f8, which is kind of crazy. But it doesn't mind knight a3. But in reality, this is way simpler to play. Like, this just liquidates the position to a two-pawn up position very, very easily. Because the issue is, obviously, rook a1 runs into knight c2. So if the rook moves to a square like c1, uh, trying to defend the c2 pawn, then, yeah, the knight can just drop back to c4, attacking b2. If b3 is played, you just lose a piece. And if rook b1 is played trying to defend b2, I assume you can just take it and renew the threat on the knight. And yeah, that's a brilliant move according to the engine. So there is no obvious way out for white. And the best thing white can do is just take, which, I mean, it doesn't cut it because it's still completely winning. The computer says it's not that good, but okay, it's way easier to play. Bishop c3, knight c3, queen c3. King f2 was surprising. I mean, he resigned in this position, but I was just going to take on c2 with check, be up three pawns, and after something like bishop to e2, queen c5, okay, king g2 is more realistic. And maybe it's somewhat difficult for me to develop because b7 is kind of weak if I move the bishop. But I, I assume I can just castle, maybe go b6, bishop b7. If something like rook c1, maybe just queen e7, or I can take on a3. Queen e7 is more realistically what I... Nah, I don't know, there's no threat on my king though, so I could just go pawn hunting. But the point is, I'm up way too many pawns. White doesn't really have anything here. And yeah, I hope that this might encourage you to try this e6 variation of the fantasy. I have made a couple of videos on it previously, so if you want to check those out, like I said, playlist will be below. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.